Hey friends, Rob Pitt back at it here on another episode of the Hornet Nation podcast on SHN Sports, joined by none other than the man himself, <laughs> Coach Rodney Southern. You'll be the first to tell me, though, you're not, you know, we always say you're the man, but this is all a team effort around here, Coach, and it's good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. New season, getting started, underway. I know a lot of excitement around new facilities, new practice field, uh, watermelon scrimmage just happened. Just really, what's the mindset heading into this year with you and your staff? Well, it's it's obviously exciting, but at the same time, it's kind of chaos because we're we're fixing to be a man without a country for a little while. But, uh, you know, obviously once it's all complete and we can get in our own facility and our own stadium, you know, that's going to change the overall outlook of – uh, hopefully all of our programs, not just football. But, you know, we have had a tremendous summer. I've been really, really pleased with how hard these kids have worked. They were here. Uh, we were able to get on our new practice field the whole month of July, which has been a godsend because, you know, we've lost almost all of our grass <laughs> out here and, you know, for parking lots and facilities. But, you know, we've adapted. The kids have adapted really well. It's usually us old guys that have the harder time adapting. But, uh, you know, we're excited. We're excited about where we are. We're excited about what we've got coming back. Here again with head coach Rodney Southern, also the athletic director. Uh, you wear many hats, many shoes here with the district. A lot of great things going on. And as we look into this season, just had a moment earlier to talk with Austin Taylor, and, and he's battling through some adversity back at it now. What do you think really is maybe starting to stand out with some of these guys that were on the squad last year uh, as we look into this new season coming up? Well, probably the biggest thing is there's no way you can learn without experience, and there's no way to get experience other than be thrown to the uh, to the fire. You know, we had 13, 14, if you count Trayshawn as a freshman, guys that were up playing varsity football. And, and if we were 100% honest, the majority of them should not have been up. They should have been on JV or Trayshawn obviously played – the first six games uh, on our freshman team. But, you know, those guys now are a year older. They're a year stronger. Um, and the big thing, they're a year more experienced. You know, every one of them got to play in that playoff game. And, and we knew – in that situation against a team as good as Fort Ben Marshall was, I, I mean, I dressed them and I said, if we dress them, we're going to play them. And, uh, you know, we dressed 69 people for that game and 59 of them played and 59 of them are coming back. So uh, overall, that part is, is exciting because we know now we've got guys that understand a lot of the things that we're trying to teach. And when you do that, the experience factor kind of takes over. You know, Huntsville continues to grow, but I feel like this is a community. Obviously, we came back because we love the community so much, and I feel like this is a community that just really embraces its culture. From an athletic standpoint, what would you say – and I know this question gets kind of thrown around a lot, but I know that you guys embrace this and, and really believe it. What do you feel like maybe is something that's standing out this year as far as culture and, and how this team is coming together? Well, the big thing is our – you know, we've always kind of had a hashtag or, a, you know, your word or your theme. But to me, the whole time this year, it was it was the word team because at some point in September, hopefully – you know, we're going to have to all be one big team in a brand new stadium and a brand new facility. Uh, so, you know, to me, that was the kind of the culmination of all this is the fact that, you know, we are still, even though we're a growing community, we're still in a small town kind of mentality, which I love that. And, and I think our kids embrace that. But I think for the first time, you know, when we do walk out there, whatever the date it ends up being, the ability to say, you, you know, we're going to dress in our field house and walk straight out onto a field. We're not going to have to get on a bus. We're not going to have to load an equipment truck. And, you know, and we're all going to be one big team that Friday night. So I, I'm excited for our kids, obviously, but I'm more excited for some of the old timers that have been here a long time and have never had a place that we can call our own. Yeah, it's great to have a new facility that'll be opening up before too long. And and here we are, the season, just right around the corner, Lufkin scrimmage coming up. How do you really prepare for these scrimmages, and what are you really looking forward to most heading into the scrimmage week? Well, big thing, this this one, uh, scrimmage-wise, you know, today will be our first day uh, where we've practiced our varsity kids in the afternoon. And obviously everybody knows, you know, the heat we're having right now and what we're dealing with. We started our freshmen outside because I wanted them to be acclimated because they're a harder group to acclimate sometimes. Uh, 
once school starts, you know, but our varsity guys will hit the field this afternoon and it will be hot. Uh, so we're, we're looking for some consistency. Uh, obviously, you're not going to show everything that you're going to do uh, in a scrimmage. I, I want to see how hard we'll play against, you know, the – Lufkin's got a running back committed to Notre Dame. They've got some players, and they have players every year. And, and we've held our own the last few years, and, and I want to see that same intensity, but also manage the heat and manage the, the live quarters like a real game. The heat's just part of the game this time of the year, right, Coach? Well, and I, I've told people before that, you know, everybody kind of tries to prepare for it, but then – I say, okay, well, once school starts, we've got to practice after school. We don't have many other options. And I'm like, it, it, just because school started doesn't mean that, you know, it's 88 instead of 108. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to deal with it. It's part of it. And, and we may deal with it, you know, two more months. We'll see if we can get some cold weather. We'll be praying and try to get that to, to funnel down from up north. Coach, just the last uh, couple of questions here. You know, practice field is a beautiful new facility over there, and the practice field as well. I told this to Austin, and, and, and he kind of echoed this sentiment. Beautiful backdrop. Saw some of the video out there. I mean, it's amazing to look at this practice field and then see behind it just the beautiful piney wood trees. I mean, it's really the identity of Huntsville. Well, it is. And and once our facilities are all complete, you know, they're fencing the, the grass field that's up there as we speak, and hopefully we'll have all that secured and we can start working on that field to bring it back because <clears throat> excuse me because the the water was shut off to it we we lost some of that field but that'll actually be the only grass you know that we have other than what we have at Mance Park and you know and I told our freshmen I said you guys don't realize that you're spoiled they're never going to practice football on a grass field anymore uh, and we haven't played a game on grass since my first year here so you know, we're, we're going to be very blessed, uh, but the backdrop once all of this is complete is it's going to be one of the one of the prettiest facilities in the state of Texas. That was one of my final questions, you know, talking about mm -hmm. other schools like Mance Park and just the renovations that are going on over there. It, it truly is a blessing and really, I believe, setting up a pipeline for a lot of success for this program. Not that you haven't had it before, but now these kids really have something that they can call their own. Maybe just a thought or two about the progress being made at the junior high level. Well, and, and you know, the renovation over there, you, you see the new cafetorium and the big entry. But what you don't see in there is, you know, we're we're going to have a new weight room in there. We're going to have new dressing areas. There's going to be new band areas because we're kind of all moving around in there. So, you know, just the idea of having a brand new weight room over there, which, you know, it may be Christmas or later before that happens. But, uh, you know, to take a building that, you know, is as old as that building is and being able to do things within there from a dressing room standpoint, from a weight room standpoint, because obviously over there we've got to share boys and girls, but uh, you know, we've got a gym over there, the what people call the eighth grade gym. You know, I love that gym because it's a true old gymnasium. So we're gonna renovate and do some things. But once it's all done, and it may be this time next year before everything is fully complete, kids hopefully will realize and parents will realize how fortunate they are to have the facilities that we're going to have. Coach, looking forward to catching up with you weekly, getting an insight about how things are going. I know you'll never give away any game secrets, and I'll never ask you because I've learned you know, many years ago, Coach. But looking forward to this year. Final question for me, as we move on, here you are again. You've been with this di district for quite some time now. What's made this so special, the journey for you and you know, also for your staff? You've got a lot of guys that are continuing to be a part of this program, and they've all bought in. How special has that been, and what's it been like for you over these years? Well, it's been good, and I've told people, you know, People know my history from the, you know, my first head coaching job in Marshall, Texas. And and I look at Marshall as one of my Texas homes. Marshall's very similar to here, or Huntsville's very similar to Marshall. Uh, you know, the people here have embraced uh, what we wanted to do. The program had kind of fallen on some rough times, um, you know, but I also raised my kids here. You know, my son had a great experience here through his time and is fixing to graduate from Sam Houston. And so this has kind of become home for me. Uh, it's a lot like my original home in Louisiana. Uh, same type of people, hardworking people who uh, who love 
what they do, you know, whatever it is that they do. But uh, it's been a good experience for me, and I've been fortunate here because, uh, you know, when Dr. Shepard got here, we we were in the early stages of changing the culture, but I think he's done an amazing job of moving that forward even more. And obviously facilities will always help, but, um, you know, this place, I told our Booster Club the other night, this place is now my home, and and – I know at whatever point I step away from here, I know the place is going to be in a lot better shape than it was when we got here. Coach, just because you mentioned Louisiana, do you cook a mean boudin? Do you make some, you know, do you got any recipes for us that you ever whip up? Well, I'm not a boo, I'm not a big boudin, but uh, I make a pretty good gumbo. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you up on that sometime. Well, here he is again, head coach Rodney Southern, also the athletic director, continuing to do great work here for our students in Huntsville. Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. Looking forward to catching up with you. Friends, that'll wrap it up here with Coach Southern. We'll have more as each week goes on. As always, Rob Hip here for the Hornet Nation podcast on SHN Sports.